can't afford to get married. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> How are we supposed to abstain from sex? We've been dating for five years. I dated for five years and I did it. Bam! <laughs> Not everyone's as strong as me. <laughs> um, okay, first off, the first line is completely crazy. <laughs> Can't afford it? You have bought into some myth that your wedding needs to cost an average, you know, the average wedding in the United States costs $32,000. So you bought into a myth that you got to do that. Look, I'll marry you on the stage right now. Free. <laughs> 500 bucks. Uh, <laughs> That's how much it costs you to get married, man. It's not about money. It's not about throwing some nonsense. Look, you have to prepare for a marriage, not a wedding, right? Preparing your life for a marriage with somebody who is as crazy and sinful as you are, that's what you got to prepare for, right? Listen, and, 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 and don't think that when you get married, everything's going to be, I mean, it's going to be this, the, 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 the work you have to do is not about affording some kind of marriage. It's about, have I invested in the person and figured out how we get disconnected? Because men and women, as I talked about in the, in the service before, men are, and women are vastly different. I have three daughters. My wife can give them a list of things to do. Because they say that men have kind of this, in their mind, by way of information, they have a road. And the road goes kind of two directions. Like it goes this way and that way, and that's kind of the male brain. But then the female brain, they say, is the information superhighway. There's like all kinds of turns and twists and a thousand things happen. Where my wife can tell my girls, do this, do this, do this, and do it all. And my wife starts talking. She gets to like third thing on the list. I'm like, da, 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 stop talking. I can't even handle it. So I'll go down. She'll be like, okay, take the clothes out of the washer. So I'll go, okay, okay, good, stop. And I'll run down and put them, boom. And then I'll go back upstairs and go, what's next? She'll put them in the dryer. Right, okay. <laughs> One thing at a time, maybe two as a guy. These are completely different worlds, man. So you're going to marry this person and you guys are crazy and you're different and it's men and it's women and it's communication. You know, two biggest things, two biggest things in marriage that bring down marriages, sex and money. Make sure that you have those things figured out because you need to start talking about what's our sex life going to look like? How are we going to actually budget and spend money? All right, it doesn't matter if you have a lot or a little. You've got to budget it no matter what. You've got to figure out what you're going to prioritize. How, make sure you have sexual expectations that are clear. I know a lot of people, they get married, they assumed way too much about the sexual conversation. They get married, there's failed expectations. And so you've got to be investing in the communication, the conflict, and the sex, and the money conversation. Investing in one of our, the, 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 the wedding, man, don't buy into that myth. You get married when it's very clear in front of the Lord, in front of the people who are closest to you. This is time. This is the person. You get married, man, for free. Don't waste your money on that stuff. Um, and then you go forward and you serve the Lord. And um, man, what do you need? What do you need? you need? You need love and air, right? When my wife and I got married, we had zero money. I had debt from school. And we got married and we got in a car and we drove across the country and we knew nobody. And it was the middle of the summer and we drove through Montana. We were coming to Vancouver and the air conditioning blew in her old car. And so we had this ice bucket and we would take our socks and we would dip it in the ice and we'd put it on our head like that just to stay warm, cool, disgusting. <laughs> And we came across and we knew nobody. We had no money. And I was going to go to Regent and spend a bunch of money. She was working out at daycare. We had nothing. Because that's not what marriage is. It's not about having a bunch of money. That's part of the adventure. And so making sure before the Lord, before people around you, man, we support this, whatever. And we go forward with that. So yeah, um, man, how are you supposed to abstain from sex? I would say five, five years is one of the ways that you... <laughs> actually succeeded abstaining from having sex. Five years too long. I did it for five years. Crazy town. I would never tell someone to do that. Um, and so in the Bible, I mean, it's a crazy concept to date someone for five years, right? Biblically speaking, um, 
you know, you're, you're dating for marriage and you're working toward marriage and, uh, and, and probably dating for five years, you're setting yourself up for uh, failure, um, but you abstain from sex by having self-mastery. You know, Tim Keller talks about... In our culture, we celebrate guys and like, oh, guys, they can go around and sleep with anyone and raw, raw guys, you know, we're alpha males. We're. Where every other culture in the world all throughout history, they celebrated when men actually had self-mastery. When they could control themselves enough not to sleep around, that was a guy you wanted to follow. That was who the tribe respected. The tribe never respected the guy because every guy wanted to. It wasn't an issue of wanting to. It's an issue of who, who doesn't because that's the guy we should follow. That's the guy we should respect. Becoming those kind of men who take the responsibility for abstaining from sex. If I sit down with a couple and they say, yeah, we're sleeping together, I just look to him. It's your fault. But she, no, your fault. You're the guy. You're supposed to lead her. But she looks so hot. Run. <laughs> Dude, when Potiphar's wife, who is super hot in Genesis, tried to hit on Joseph and get him to sleep with her, he ran, literally ran out of the room and left his clothes in her hand and he ran around naked into the street. That's what some of you guys should look like, all right? <laughs> she tried to sleep with me. All right, next question.